Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight, I am talking about Meniere's disease and viral infections. Here's a disclaimer pause the video. None of this is medical advice, just thoughts. Okay, so I had a request um, after posting a video yesterday regarding the association of Meniere's disease and autoimmune disease potentially being a result of abnormal genetics involving our ability to discern our self from non-self through our immune system, referred to as the MHC, major histocompatibility complex. In the article, they referenced MHC2. Now, Within autoimmunity, in the literature on autoimmunity, you'll see a lot of crosstalk between latent or reactivated viral infections provoking autoimmune disease. Whether or not this is just an association, whether or not there is an actual causal relationship between these viral infections and autoimmune disease remains to be determined depending on the autoimmune disease. Certainly Epstein-Barr virus seems to be a co-criminal in a lot of autoimmune diseases. And there's a researcher, which I'll mention later, um, who's really looking into that with Meniere's disease. So without, but kind of the basic premise is when our immune system is attacking ourselves, maybe due to weakened genetics, is it because there's this viral infection that's going on? <clears throat> it's not being kind of kept in jail, so to speak, by the immune system. And then is that resulting in some sort of inflammation that's damaging tissue? Relative to this discussion, it would be the inner ear. So this is a nice synopsis. I believe this was from 2019. And this is a meta-analysis. So meta-analysis... It involves taking a lot of studies and they distill them down and they typically whittle down the number of studies to just a few that meet their selection criteria. And then they say, okay, these are the robust studies. Now we have this larger group of patients that we can evaluate and say, based on that data, what does it show? Their net sum was that they found a mild association between um, latent cytomegalovirus CMV and Meniere's disease. They did not see an association with Epstein-Barr, other uh, HSV, so herpes simplex viruses, or other viruses. What does that mean to you? First of all, CMV infections, um, 60 to 90% of adults have encountered cytomegalovirus at some point in their life, and they may have had it in infancy, it's thought that if you have it in infancy, it can lead to more damage of the ears uh, later in life. Uh, you can develop a mononucleosis-like illness without as much uh, a pharyngitis or sore throat with CMV. But needless to say, a lot of people are going to get CMV throughout their life. It doesn't mean that it's going to cause Meniere's disease. But they did see some potential association with latent CMV infection, perhaps being a provoking long-term factor for Meniere's. They didn't make many conclusions beyond that. So that's what this study found. But keep in mind with research, you can pretty much find research illustrating something. Um, well, not everything, but a lot of things. So then this is an article published by, if I, forgive me if I pronounce his name incorrectly, Dr. Gasek, G-A-C-E-K, um, Dr. Richard Gasek, if I remember correctly. And he's at University of Massachusetts Hospital, so a pretty notable <clears throat> institution. And he's been looking at this relationship of viral infections with Meniere's for many years. And one article I read, of his seemed to be that he investigated temporal bone biopsies and vestibular ganglion uh, biopsies in Meniere's patients who had uh, passed away and found evidence of viral nucleic acids in the vestibular ganglion, I believe at a higher 
uh, level than one would suspect. So that started him down this path of looking at this viral relationship. He's a, one of the strong proponents of it. So if you're reading literature, if you have questions about Meniere's disease being a viral condition, he seems to be one of the um, forward thinkers on this. So in this study, he talks about putting Meniere's patients on antiviral medications. He, you, this is an open access article. You can go look at it. He gives the dosing in there. And the net conclusion was that he found if he treated Meniere's patients early in the course of their condition that he could stop and improve the hearing loss in a significant proportion. Uh, it wasn't everyone, <clears throat> but it was a significant proportion and the vertigo could be controlled during that time period. It seemed as if someone had Meniere's disease for a longer period of time. Uh, he didn't see those positive effects with hearing loss and vertigo as much, uh, but it is interesting. And, you know, we like as humans to grab on to singular models of thinking, patients and doctors. And I think it's always important to take a few steps back and say, yeah, this viral component could be a thing. And what I talked about last night relative to the immune system, is it possible that there is a genetic weakness in certain Meniere's patients for discerning self from non-self? And... We know that viruses tend to be co-criminals with autoimmune disease. So is there a genetic weakness? And then there's a viral infection. And then the immune system gets overactive trying to combat a latent viral infection. And does that lead to more immune inflammation, which then further prevents drainage of the endolymphatic sac that results in Meniere's provocations? And could potentially someone, <clears throat> excuse me, change their diet because we know that autoimmune disease patients seem to be reporting that diet can impact their symptoms. And could that reduce inflammation and impact Meniere's disease? Maybe. And could, as Dr. Gasek is saying, uh, give someone early in the course an antiviral, and maybe that helps their autoimmune disease. And maybe that helps the Meniere's infection. And maybe it's purely the viral infection early on. Hard to say. Um, we don't know all the answers but here's the literature as I could see it presenting kind of a, a both sided approach because all too often uh, when you're hearing about the quote unquote science, um, you know, it may be just a meta analysis um, be, or it may just be one study that people like. So I think this is good. So um my conclusion is, yeah, I think viruses can be a part of Meniere's disease because I think Meniere's disease is an autoimmune condition and I think it's a mast cell activation syndrome condition. And viruses certainly could be playing into that and provoking all of this and potentially causal, especially early on. I think that's plausible. Um, my approach with Meniere's patients that I've seen some interesting changes has been largely dietary modulation and supplementation and vestibular rehab in a specific format. And I've seen some interesting things. So um, send me your thoughts, your questions. I'll try to do more videos on what you all have questions about relative to the inner ear. Meniere's disease, I'm going to do a video on BPPV pretty soon, why it keeps reactivating. And Dr. Gasek feels that it's a viral infection there as well. So we'll address all that. Have a good night, everyone, and I'll see you later.